Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a brand new series that's going to be so much fun. Trust me. It's great artists having really bad days. Their least appealing, most abysmal recordings. And you would be amazed how many of those there are. The fact of the matter is that in the latter days of the 20th century, the record industry just recorded so much of everything by everyone in absurd quantities that even the very, very, very best artist blew something. It was just inevitable. Nobody is that good. And so what I would like to do in this series is feature some especially dismal examples of great artists at work, because it shows, first of all, that they're only human, and second of all, that uh, well, you know, you still have to keep on listening and listen carefully, even in music in which you would think they would never make a set of foot wrong. Well, they do. Maybe more often than you would like to think. Here is the typical example number one. It is Leonard Bernstein's first recording of Mahler's Fifth Symphony. Now, his second recording of Mahler's Fifth with the Vienna Philharmonic was excellent. It was absolutely first rate. But his first one with the New York Philharmonic, well, not so much. First of all, there is the extraordinarily seedy sound of the orchestra. I mean, the Philharmonic was never a, 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 an orchestra that was known for its tonal luster. Let's put it that way. They were always a little bit rough and ready. You know, they were very rough and ready under Metropolis. Bernstein was not an orchestral trainer in the sense that he was not after, you know, like Kariana, gorgeous, homogenized, beautiful, glowing sound. That wasn't his thing. He was after raw energy, intensity, emotion, spontaneity, all of those things, spirituality, you name it. But, you know, great playing, well, he expected it. He just expected it, and sometimes he got it, and sometimes he didn't. This was a didn't. Now, where does some of the playing go wrong? Well, particularly in the scherzo. I mean, really, in the scherzo, there's one section in the recapitulation, you know, where they're, where the glockenspiel is whipping around, and they go, yeah, dum pa ta dum pa ta dum boom boom da 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 boom pa ta ta da 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 well, the timpanist gets lost, very, very lost. It's really kind of embarrassing. People make mistakes here. I mean, Barbaroli, it happens too, but in Barbaroli, it happens within the context of a great performance. This performance is really rather perfunctory. And I remember when I first heard it, you know, and this is what happens to all of us. You're, set, you're told, well, Bernstein's Mahler is like, you know, the bee's knees. It's fabulously wonderful as a matter of course, because he identified with the composer ultimately and everything he did was extremely idiomatic. And, you know, in some ways it is, but the fact of the matter is, I listened to it and I was like, mm -hmm. I, right away I could tell something was a little off. And and most of us, and I, I, I can't stress this enough, you don't have to be a vastly experienced listener to know when things aren't quite going well. You know that they're not going well because it's boring, because you fall asleep during it, or because or because you, you think you should be hearing something extra that isn't there. Usually when that happens, um, if you're a sympathetic listener, you're right. There's something that just just isn't there. And in this particular performance, the first movement for Euler March, well, it's okay. The second movement, the sound is somehow, it's just underwhelming. It's so grainy and so so lacking in fullness and 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 vivacious vivacity. That's the word. It just seems like like they're going through the motions at this point in their career, and uh, maybe they were. It's entirely possible that everybody was having an off day. And, you know, when you're contractually obligated to make a recording, whether you have an off day or not is irrelevant. They have to salvage what they can salvage and issue what they can issue. But Bernstein's later recording with the Vienna Philharmonic, and it was recorded while they were on tour at a very good acoustic. I believe it was recorded in, 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 in Frankfurt or Hamburg, one of the North German cities. It, it really sounds like he's making amends for this something of a letdown. 
I mean, the climaxes just lacked oomph. They just don't have the right intensity. And and overall, it it goes, it goes, you know. But if you think that Bernstein's Mahler has to be great, here is the example that proves you wrong. <laughs> it doesn't, and sometimes it just isn't. So keep on listening, friends. I look forward to our next discussion of great artists having bad days. Take care.